Hello everyone and welcome. We hear a lot about shortages of PPE or personal protective equipment for our healthcare workers during the current COVID-19 crisis. We also hear a lot about face masks and whether all of us should be wearing a face mask in public when we go out these days. There's a lot of information and opinion about this topic. But did you know that the term face mask doesn't really mean anything because it could be a lot of different things, a lot of different products. And just to understand that it can be used for a medical purpose like pre protecting you from SARS-CoV-2 could be misleading. So FDA has come out with a guidance, very clear guidance about face masks and other products that can be used in a healthcare setting or for public use. And I'm going to talk about that guidance in this particular video. For now, we're going to focus on only face masks. There are other elements in this guidance that I will uh, talk about in other videos. And you can find those videos on my YouTube channel. So let's look into this. This uh, revised guidance just came out in uh, May of this year, last month. And this relates to the enforcement policy that FDA is coming out for face masks and respirators during the current COVID-19 crisis. I'm going to talk about that. Uh, first, let's talk about the difference between a face mask and a surgical mask. Well, uh, the a face mask is any general thing which is shown on the right hand side and typically could be used for all kind of non-medical purposes. But a surgical mask is a medical device and it's shown on the left hand side. It's used for medical purposes and it's considered to be a PPE, an item of PPE. So what's a medical purpose? As shown here, a medical purpose is for diagnosis of disease or cure, mitigation, treatment or prevention of disease. So if you are saying that, hey, here's a face mask and it's going to help you against SARS-CoV-2, that's a misleading claim. Then it becomes a medical device and it doesn't qualify. So we have to be very careful about what is the intended use and how it is being marketed. Okay, here is the PPE that um, FDA considers. And these are all medical devices, a surgical mask, a face shield, a respirator. A surgical mask it provides barrier to bodily fluids and particles, and you can have that in, let's say, an operating room or in a hospital environment. They are supposed to have flammability and biocompatibility requirements. A face shield protects you from splashes of bodily fluids or other fluids that may potentially be infectious. It's supposed to cover your entire face. Respirator is a very special medical device because it's designed to filter particles. It's supposed to provide a tight fit around the nose and the mouth. So it's a special category in itself. And here's a list of devices that FDA regulates. You can see a surgical mask. You can see a child mask. You can see accessories like a face shield. You can see surgical masks with antimicrobial, antiviral agents, surgical respirators, N95 respirators, and so on. So there's a whole list. And depending upon the intended use and, as, and the product characteristics, FDA assigns a certain code, and most of these are class two devices. So what are the items covered in this revised FDA policy? Let's look at the entire list. And uh, as I said before, I'm going to focus only on face masks and surgical masks in this particular video. So the first item is face masks intended for a medical purpose. Now, they will have some certain requirements. You can use them under the current emergency, but they'll have certain requirements, and we'll talk about that. Surgical masks intended to provide liquid barrier protection, very different from face masks. Face masks, face shields, and N95 respirators not intended for a medical purpose. It can be used in those situations as well. Face shields intended for a medical purpose. Alternatives when FDA cleared or NISOH approved N95 respirators are not available. There's guidance about this and EUAs, which are emergency use authorizations for these products. So this guidance covers a lot of information. In this video, we're going to focus only on face masks and surgical masks. So let's talk about face masks and how FDA is going to enforce its policy. It's intended for source control, not as a PPE, which means that you are controlling the spread of the virus from a potentially infected person or someone who may not even have symptoms. You are protecting others by use of this particular device. It helps prevent the spread of SARS. Requirements are they should be clearly labeled as a mask, not as a surgical mask or a respirator or PPE. Contain the list of body contacting materials, not to be used in surgical or clinical settings, not to be used around heat sources or flammable gases because it can catch fire. Does not claim antimicrobial or antiviral protection. 
and does not claim particle filtration. So you can see a long list of labeling requirements. Enforcement relief is pre-market notification requirements, QSR requirements, corrections and removals, UDI requirements. And these are references of regulatory requirements for medical devices that FDA will not enforce when the intended use of a face mask is described this way. So it's a big relief. You can market a face mask under these requirements and you will not be subject to the remainder of regulatory requirements as listed. Now, how about uh, surgical masks? So intended use here is in a healthcare setting. It provides barrier against microorganisms, bodily fluids and particles. And it has been tested for flammability and biocompatibility. Requirements are very similar to uh, what we talked about the face masks, but um, they should be, labeling should be accurate. It should not be misleading. It should include a list of body contacting materials, should not claim antimicrobial antiviral protection, no infection prevention claim, and no particle filtration claim because then it becomes a respirator. Enforcement relief is again on those regulatory requirements if it is labeled this way under the current emergency. And you can find these further details in the emergency use authorization for these products. In the next video, we're going to talk about face shields and respirators. So as you can see, there's a lot more to the story than just a face mask or a surgical mask, different requirements. And you can definitely have a use of face mask in a medical setting or a medical purpose, even though it is really not designed for that. So labeling should be right. Intended use should be clearly described. No misleading claims. And then FDA will choose not to enforce the regulatory requirements. You have to certainly notify them of the product. So I hope this is useful. In the next video, we'll talk about face shields and respirators. Uh, I encourage all of you to go check out this guidance and emergency use authorization letters on FDA's website to learn more about them. And as always, you can send me your questions or anything that you want to learn more about and I will definitely produce another video. So a lot is going on. You can keep in touch and catch up with all these developments by subscribing to my YouTube channel. And here's how you can do it. You can go to my YouTube channel and subscribe. You can also follow me on LinkedIn because whenever I post a video on LinkedIn, I offer a link back to the original video on YouTube. So you can sign up and subscribe to my YouTube channel. As I said before, send me your questions and comments, anything that's on your mind that you want to learn more about. Thank you for your interest and attention, and I hope all of you are staying safe.